All right, we're starting our new unit, rotational motion. Um, and to get us started, we're just going to talk about the variables we're going to see. So throughout this, we're going to be talking about a rigid body rotating around an axis. So for instance, if we had like a wheel, rigid body mean that all the pieces are attached to each other, and it's rotating about the axis. The axis is right here, okay, right in the middle. And so this thing like rotates um, around it like that. Okay, so the first thing we need to make sure we know is radius. Okay, radius, as you probably know, hopefully, is the distance from the center of a circle to wherever point you're talking about. Now, be careful. When we're talking about radius, we don't just mean um, to the edge. We just mean to whatever we care about. Usually we care about the edge, but it could be anywhere. All right. Now, some new variables. Um, you're going to see this a lot. Theta. Theta is your angular position. It's kind of like x back when we were doing kinematics, except for where x told you where you were on a line, angular position tells you where you are on a circle. So for instance, let's say, doo, 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 um, well, we need a place to call 0. You can call 0 wherever you want. Usually we call 0 whatever angle you start up. I'm going to call 0. Um, um, I'm going to call 0 right here, okay, theta equals 0. In that case, as something spins, la la la, it's spinning around, change the color, or change the, yeah, um, it ends up at a different angle. So let's say it was spinning, and so this point right here ended up over here instead, okay, then this angle would be theta. Basically, how much angle did you pass through to get from where you started to where you ended? I guess one way you could find that is if you think of, um, oops, the thicker one. If you take the um, arc length, so this length right here, Okay, if you take that and divide by the radius, you should get theta. So that's one way you can define theta. You don't actually use that very often, though. But we should write it down. Um, this is arc length is s. You guys may or may not remember that from algebra, or no, it would have been algebra. It would have been algebra two, I think. Yeah. Anyway. By the way, when you do that, that only works if you're working in radians. We will be using radians for everything. Hopefully you already know what a radian is, if you don't talk to me. Okay. Um, remember how many radians, radians are in one revolution? You're going to need to know that. So one revolution is two pi radians. We're going to use that a lot, so just make sure you write that down somewhere. Let's see what else do you need to know, and which also equals 360 degrees. So that's how you're going to convert between um, degrees and radians. 2 pi radians equals 360 degrees, or you can divide by 2 on both sides and get pi radians equals 180 degrees. Okay, so think of theta as if, uh, like, that's the position. Think of it as x. Well, when we derived x before, we got a new thing. So we got velocity. Well, we have the same kind of a thing with called angular velocity. How fast is it spinning? We've used that before when you're dealing with centripetal force very briefly. So we have this other thing. It's an omega. Okay, looks like a w, but it's not. It's an omega, and that stands for angular velocity. Okay. That's um, if you want the average angular velocity, that would be the change of your angular position divided by how much time it took to take the change. Or if you want your angular velocity at any given point, then that is the derivative of angular position. Just like velocity, instantaneous velocity, was the derivative 
of position, angular velocity, instantaneous angular velocity, is the derivative of, ang of angular position. Okay. Um, we actually have the next one. If we had taken velocity and derived it, you would have got acceleration. We have a similar thing for angular. And this one is an alpha. Alpha. Kind of looks like a fish, but the tail is open. And it's also horizontal, because there's another symbol that looks like a fish that's like diving. That's a gamma. We're not using that. Okay, this is angular acceleration. Oops, that's not how you spell acceleration. Acceleration. Okay, and again, the average angular acceleration is the change in angular velocity over time. Or you can use the instantaneous angular acceleration is the derivative of angular velocity with respect to time. Okay, so remember, oops, position, derive that, you get velocity. Um, it's not derived, derivative of that. I always say that, it's something stupid. That's not the right word. Take the derivative of position, you get velocity. Take the derivative of velocity, you get acceleration. And it works back the other way. If you have acceleration, if you take the integral of that, you get omega, angular velocity. And if you take the integral of that, you get position. Okay, those are really all of the variables and they all act exactly the same way as the kinematics equations that you're used to. So I'm gonna rewrite those. Doot. Let's see. That's an A. Equations! All right, you remember these, you know these, okay? You know position equals initial position plus initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. This really works. If you want to know what angle you're, let's say you put a ladybug at the edge of that circle or something, okay, for some reason there's a, there's a ladybug sitting right here, and I want to know where it is on the circle after a certain amount of time, this is what I would use, okay? This would be where it is after a certain amount of time. This is um, what angle it started at. This is the velocity that the thing was spinning when it started. And this is the acceleration of the, uh, basically how, mu how fast the velocity changes. Um, yeah, okay, all the, other, all the other equations work too. Okay, we've also got angular velocity equals initial angular velocity plus acceleration times time. And we've also got my favorite, angular velocity squared equals initial angular velocity squared plus two times angular acceleration times the change in angular position. Okay, literally exactly the same equations that we used in the kinematics unit, it's just that we change x to theta, so instead of linear position, angular position, we change v to omega, so that we have, instead of linear velocity, we have angular velocity, and a to alpha, so instead of linear acceleration, we have angular acceleration. And that's, that's really it. I guess really the last thing you need to know is directions. These are vectors because you could be spinning this way or this way. So typically speaking, we use, we'll, we'll use something called the right hand rule. So we've done this in class before. It's been a long, long time. But if something's spinning, um, let's see, it's spinning like around like that you take the fingers of your right hand and you have them curl the way that it's spinning and stick your thumb out and the way that your thumb is pointing is the direction I'm air quoting here the direction of your angular velocity um, so in this case if you put if you stick your hand out and you like yeah I you can't see me doing this can you uh, yeah if you stick your hand out and you curl it the thumb would be pointing like right at you um, as a general rule, what you can really say is if it's spinning this way, 
that's positive. I should have that the same color, shouldn't I? This way is positive. And if it's spinning the other way, that's typically negative. Negative, okay? Actually here, negative omega. Um, same with acceleration. If, if the velocity is getting more and more positive, that would be positive angular acceleration. If the velocity is getting more and more negative, then that would be negative acceleration. Um, yeah, if you can't keep that straight, because it, it looks weird. For one thing, this is counterclockwise, which is the wrong way for a clock and everything else we use in Western culture. Um, and that's positive. Think of it at more of a unit circle. So you remember that unit circle from school, from, I guess, when did you learn it? Algebra 2, maybe? Like this was zero, and then you went that way around. Remember that? So that, that's positive, and negative is the other way. Okay, now that's it for variables. Next we're going to uh, relate these variables to linear equations.